Gotta look through your filmography work. My lord. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just. That's what I say every day. Hello, everybody. Thank you for coming by. This is Cinema Talk with your host, Mike Mixtape. And today's interview, I have an incredible guest tonight, today, whenever you're listening to this. This is the man whose <laughs> career is a bit interesting to talk about, but we're going to go into it full force. It's Leroy Myers. Hey, I'm here. <laughs> Thanks for... My voice, I'm a ghost. <laughs> it's just the voice of Leroy Myers. He's just a ghost. Ooh, Ooh, I'm a porno ghost. <laughs> There's an idea for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a porno ghost. <laughs> I, I think somebody already did a ghost porn parody, so Probably. they beat me to it. Damn yeah. it. Damn it. I don't even have a pottery wheel, so it's 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 useless. I can't go anywhere with it. Without <laughs> that scene, we're nothing. <laughs> Damn it. So, uh... The first question I usually tell all my guests is, uh, or ask, what is the earliest memory you can think of when it comes to movies in general? Um, I'm not sure which came first, but I think I remember as a kid, um, I remember watching Blazing Saddles for the first time. Ooh. And we were at, um, we were at our friend's house. So like the whole family went over and they had a projector Ooh. and we would watch it i guess it was 16 millimeter and we watched we watched blazing saddles on their wall cool. and um i remember there was a trailer for um the elephant man before Ooh. and it scared the the can i swear or is yes it no it's, it's, you can swear fuck it okay yeah it scared the fuck out of me uh the elephant man um and then uh Blazing Saddles basically changed my life, and I was, I was really young when it, when we watched it. So it was, uh, yeah, that was... blew my mind. That that's probably the earliest memory. I have a couple others, but I'm just that's probably the earliest. I think oh. I remember seeing uh, uh, Pete's Dragon in the theater. Oh. That 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 ages me. And oh, I, I, it? I don't know how old. Uh, I was. I must have been tiny. I don't know what year it came out, but that I saw. I I remember seeing like some movies in the theater. My my folks would take me a lot, but but to be honest, that memory of Blazing Saddles is still like that. Still sits with me, and it still affects everything. That movie is, you know, yeah, probably still my favorite, and uh, yeah, so it affects everything I do. Cool, cool. By the way, the original Pete's Dragon was 1977. Ah, oh, so I wouldn't have seen it. I couldn't have seen it right when it came out. Maybe they re-released it. That, it, it... That, that could be. That could be the case, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was born in 77, so I wouldn't have seen it that uh, year. But... Uh... <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, well, some, somewhere around there. They must have re-released it or, yeah, you know. Yeah, that could have been. Okay, okay. Um, so... When it comes to movies, there's there's been so many over the years. What movie do you think has all the right elements? Like it has great acting, great you know cinematography, directing. What is like the movie you could think of that has all the elements? Um, The Godfather one and two. Uh, ah. I mean, yeah, I don't think there's, I don't think there's a better movie for cinematography, storytelling, acting, everything all together, ups and downs. It's a roller coaster. Um, you know, and I know they did the cut of those two movies together, um, which I don't, I don't know that I need to see it in chronological order, but, uh, to me that those two movies together though, um, even if you just watch one, then two make the perfect movie. Cool. Okay. I could pick that. Uh, so what is the worst movie you ever seen? Like, what's the worst of the worst? Oh. Like, ugh, just... See, I like really bad movies though, so it's it's hard to. Oh, okay. Say, <laughs> like, so I'm I'm a I'm a camp guy. I love like, kitsch. It's um, I I I worked at Troma. I like I love like bad. 
Um, but I'm going to tell you there's one that I don't think is that popular, um, but it was shown to me by some friends, and I'm, I've fallen in love with it. Um, and I've got our – man, see, I have to – oh, get, get Even is what it's called. Uh. And um, it, it's spelled on the cover like one word. Um, it's, it is, it was made by a lawyer, um, and he starred in it, um, and it's got some martial arts in it, and he's like, he is not the, the ideal guy. It was like 86 is when they did it, and Uh it was, maybe it wasn't, it wasn't 86. There was another movie in 86. It's, it's called Get Even, and it's written as one word, and John D. Hart and Wings Hauser was in it, and um, it is so, so bad it's good. Like, that is probably, that, you know, I there are movies that are so bad and I can't watch them over and over again, but this one is really, like, just badly made and badly thought out, but so much passion went into it, um, clearly, and it's so entertaining. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to, I'm going to say that because I don't know that I can't think of a movie offhand. That's just so bad. I can't watch it. Uh. There are, there are movies, but I think uh, that's a matter of taste. This one clearly, uh, everybody could probably agree on is, uh, it's, it's made horribly, but it's, it's so fun. So yeah, get even it's, um, yeah, it's there about a, a road cop. So it's good. All right. Highly recommended. He sings a song in it. He does the whole soundtrack. He does the whole soundtrack himself, actually. Um, also, so he stars in it. He's a lawyer, but he stars in it, um, and he he uh, does the soundtrack. He directs it. He wrote it. Um, it looks like Wings Hauser was actually drunk through the whole thing, and he's great. I love Wings Hauser. He's like just B movie guy, but, um, I recommend it. It's so bad. It's so great. So get even the movie. I definitely have to check that out. Oh my God. Okay. Um, so, so how did you get into like film kind of almost filmmaking? Like how did you get into that? (laughs) Almost filmmaking. (laughs) Yeah. It's, uh, uh, did you you go to, did did you go to college, you know, to do like video? Yeah production stuff and... yeah i went to i went to um where i'm from in canada uh you do like a pre-college uh it's it's college but okay uh, it's pre-university so you graduate grade 11 and then you go and you start working in a trade but it's still school so you're still taking other classes but i did uh video there worked in video um i i was a slacker in high school i really I really didn't enjoy school, so pre-university, I, I slacked my way through photography classes and photo and video classes and things like that, and um, and I really, I, I didn't really embrace it, but when I got to the end of it, I realized, oh, you know, like I could, I could make movies for a living and actually enjoy living. Um, not not living, but living my life, you know. Um, I would enjoy my job, and I I had already, um, you know, I I I always wanted to be, uh, you know, a B movie filmmaker was actually my dream, uh. and uh, then I really started getting into other stuff. So a lot of uh, '70s American flicks and uh, French New Wave and New German cinema and Japanese movies. I love Japanese movies. Um, so I watched pretty much everything I could after that. And then I went to university. I went to film school there and, um, I started making really weird, uh, movies on 16 millimeter and, uh, just made some weird stuff and, uh, really enjoyed it. I, uh, worked at, um, trauma during some of that time, took time off and, and went to New York and worked there and uh then i um i graduated and i did a lot of jobs in movies um i was a uh, in special effects i was uh 
in 35 millimeter camera rentals. I was an assistant talent agent, uh, all in mainstream. And then um, I tried some of everything. And then I started uh, producing stuff myself for comedians and uh, did some comedy specials, did some pilots, worked with some uh, pretty decent names in Canada. And um, then uh, I got into TV. Uh, strangely enough, and um, I worked my way up in TV. I, I worked in some production, and then I I went and became a TV executive. I worked my way up oh, the wow. ladder, and I got really bored towards the end, and I had a really good job, and um, I quit, and I was asked to, to go back. I wanted to write again, and um, so I wrote... Uh, for a friend actually who owned an adult studio and that was Scott at New Sensations and um, uh. he asked me to write a mainstream uh, comedy with hardcore sex in it for his adult studio and he wanted something about an office in Porn Valley and at the time parodies were starting to make their comeback in uh, uh, in uh, porn and um so I think uh, Nail and Palin had come out and the Brady parody and it was just the beginning and but DVDs were dying out in porn and so he was looking for something else and then I thought well why don't we do a parody of The Office um, and The Office had just been on a couple seasons maybe at the time it wasn't super popular at the time it was just getting a cult following mm -hmm. the American version and I had loved the British version, and then I started watching the American version and really loved the show, and uh, I wrote an Office parody, and he couldn't find a director for it. Um, they were so busy, the directors he had in-house, and uh, he asked me if I wanted to direct it, and that's how I got into porn. Ah. It was a long journey. It was a long journey. That's It's always interesting to hear about the journey leading up to the big things. Um, yeah. Oh, so then, how? When did you in, start your own uh, company or site with Wood Rocket, or Wood um, Rocket? So I, I worked. I, I was exclusive to New Sensations for about two and a half, three years, I think. Um, I was shooting kind of bigger movies, and there were things I wanted to do that didn't fit what they wanted to do. Um, so like a Simpsons parody I wanted to do and they didn't really think um, it was their style and and you know it probably wasn't and that's fine uh, so I had left and th I started working for different studios I wasn't sure I was going to open up anything on my own I, I teamed up with a couple people to do some releases like the Simpsons and um, Sailor Poon and a Family Guy parody and then I I did stuff for other companies. I did uh, the Human Sexipede, and I did a Godfather Triple X parody, and um, you know, I did a few things. Um, it was fun, but I realized uh, that I really needed to work for myself. Um, I'm not so good with authority, and uh, so I, uh, yeah, I um, spoke with a friend of mine. Um, who was looking to, um, you know, expand things. And uh, and him and another partner, we were all talking. We all saw it the same way that uh, Tube Sites, and I don't know, is, is Tube Sites a well-known phrase, or am I, it might just be an in, in, internal porn it phrase. Could, it but. could be. A, yeah. Okay, so like um, the U-Porns and Pornhubs, and uh, those are Tube Sites, and essentially it's like YouTube for porn right the problem is that in porn they're not big money companies you know each movie only makes a little profit and as dvds uh they the sales died they made less so these free sites basically were killing off uh porn and because you could get all their content for free it was exactly. a lot of it was pirated at the time um i don't know if it's the same anymore but um, at the time, there was a lot of pirating going on, and it killed off so many companies. So 
um, a lot of porn companies shut down. And so we thought, you know, instead of just kind of letting it happen, we took the step to uh, figure out, you know, let's learn from these companies and let's uh, let's go and and do a free site where we don't pirate anything. We just produce or license stuff and we'll do things like the Simpsons and, you know, we will do things that we think are fun and funny and could go viral and it'll be more about traffic than um, than, you know, selling a DVD. So uh, we started that. We started it. It took two years to build the site properly. We had we went through three different uh, companies um, and spent a lot of money and time. And uh, then in 2013, um, we we did the hard launch. So we had stuff up, but 2013 we uh, January 18th, 2013, I think. Uh -huh. um, we we launched uh, SpongeBob Square Nuts and. Uh... It went super viral, and it crashed our site, and it made us very popular right out of the gate. And uh, people checked that out and checked out our other stuff, like our web series. Like, at the time, there was memes I'd like to fuck, which was porn stars reenacting viral videos and memes. Um, and other things got recognized, and, uh, yeah, the rest is history. Oh, man. Oh, man. Long story. Sorry. That's, that was good. I mean, you gotta start somewhere. I mean, Wood Rock. I, I I check out Wood Rocket. It's a really good site and great content Thank on you. it. It's a uh, it's a place I go to to. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> we we like to think of it as um, it's a place where you can get off or stay to be entertained. That that's a good that's a good uh, company motto. You know, and we don't ask ask what people are going there for. Exactly. So we just keep doing what we do. That's good. That's good. So, uh, so out of all the um, the porn stars you've worked with, who is your favorite out of the bunch? Oh, that's that is a question that because we work with so many, and I don't want anybody thinking that uh, <laughs> they, you know, they listen and they're like, we actually have a lot that that we really like working with. So if you watch a lot of our movies. There's always a lot of the same people. Yeah, I um, noticed. And then we keep introducing people that we want to work with because there's always new people that we hear about yeah. and that contact us. Um, we do work with probably more than than most somebody who's going to be a really big part of the site and is actually a really good friend, um, uh, April O'Neil. We work with probably more than anybody else. And once again, she's also one of our closest friends. We We love her. She's like just the greatest um and uh yeah so can't go wrong with her tommy pistols a great dude we we like having him on set all the time and we're working with him on some stuff um i you know i there's too many for me to there uh, are people that i hate that i i won't say but okay. the it's it's harder for me to say people that i i love because the fact is that We've had very few terrible experiences on set, and I just don't hire those people again. Everybody else is usually pretty cool. You know, like, we just shot a movie that, um, so uh, I, I guess it's coming out next week, so I don't know, uh, you know, by the time this is on, if it'll be on. But um, we shot a movie, Wood Rocket, produced for uh, Pornhub, and April O'Neil directed it, and it Ooh. was... Um, it was uh, an Archie parody, so it'll oh, be coming out. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, so, um, and, you know, it, we had a really rough shoot. There was a hospital trip involved. Ooh. Somebody got sick. Um, but everybody on set was super cool, and, you know, it was, we had a good time shooting it despite that. So, you know, and then we shot things the next day that are that I don't know that I, I guess, you know, there's like um, the... Uh, water slide thing that we shot oh. our digs explain there's photos on my twitter and instagram but um you know like six of the top girls in the industry and everybody was cool again and we shot something else and everybody it's hard to pick who favorites are but okay. i mean 
you know, who we're working with a lot lately is April and Tommy Pistol. And, you know, I, 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 I love those guys, you know, so, uh, but I, you know, there's a lot of people I really like right. working with and a lot of people I still want to work with. Yeah, so. I can understand that. That's fine because I think it was April who knew who actually just got me into Wood Rocket, actually. I, I, cause I'm a yeah. huge follower of her stuff. She's really cool. Um, <laughs> it, it was a perfect match with her, I think. You I, know? I think it is. Like, the collaboration between you guys are just, you know, the stuff you guys do together is amazing. Yeah, and we got more. We're we're doing some crazy stuff. Um, starting March, we're launching a bunch of new things. Oh, and, wow. uh, and she's a huge part of it. So, um, yeah, she'll be working with us more regularly. And uh, and we're we're super stoked, and she is amazing. And once again, she's somebody I can text a joke to. Um, <laughs> she can text me and ask me a question. Uh, like, she's a friend, you know, which doesn't – we're out – in the middle of nowhere and uh so um most porn performers are still in la and so it's we don't talk to a ton of people all the time you know right. as friends and she's somebody that you know we love talking to so yeah she's uh <laughs> it's just weird how I, I get into these things like i'm a, I'm a turtles fan so i'm like april right. nail and it's like oh that's her porn name and it's like and I got into her more stuff, more stuff. It's like, oh, she's pretty cool. And it's like, I actually want to talk to her, like, interview her someday. It'd be pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, she is great. And, you know, I think the thing is that there was a fad in porn probably about five years ago, six years ago, where there were a lot of people, like, you know, I think geek culture in general yeah. was starting to get popular and become more mainstream. So a lot of people you know, we're clinging on to geek culture as like, you know, yeah, yeah, I'm a geek, you know, um, but she loves like Doctor Who. Yeah. She loves the turtles. She's, she's into comics. Um, she is into cartoons. She is into superheroes. She is, she's the real deal. And, um, we, we love a lot of the same things she does. So it's, it's one of those things where, you know, we hang out with her at, cons you know like uh -huh. that's um you know she fits our style because porn is what we do it's not necessarily who we are a hundred percent um and she's the same yeah she's like pretty cool shit uh yeah so out, out of all the uh work you've done what is your favorite like the, the most fun you had doing it um I think, I mean, like, there's ones I'm really proud of. Um, they weren't necessarily easy shoots. Like, Lebowski's one of my favorite movies, so doing a porn version of that was, like, a dream. And doing a porn version of Godfather, which I love, was a dream. Doing Simpsons was really surreal. Um, painting people yellow for the first time <laughs> um, was was crazy but then you know going and evolving it into sponge knob square nuts which is just super weird and funny in our eyes i mean for us to make um we're we're laughing through the whole shoot when we do something like that we you know we know it'll it'll terrify some people but that's part of the fun for us we like we like the shock a little so um i'm gonna say that that was one and then strokemon was another um you know, we knew how screwed up it was going to look. And, you know, we keep looking and pinching ourselves because, like, could this be real? Um, so, you know, it's it's hard to say that there's one in particular. Um, I'm, I've still got some that I want to do really badly. So until I get rid of that feeling, I don't think uh, I'll stop. But, um, you know, like, we did Mighty mighty muffin pounder rangers and i loved doing it like i loved it it was i had such a good time on that shoot um there was zero stress it was just perfect um you know turtles was stressful but was fun anyways and we all everybody wanted to do it and it was the same with nardians of the galaxy and game of bones and bob's boners like we we really enjoyed making those things so it it's hard to say. I think if I didn't enjoy it or, you know, they weren't all my favorites, um, I wouldn't be doing it anymore. 
Um, you know, I, I think as soon as I get tired of it, the fact is I'm one of the owners of the company. I could sit back if I wanted to. Um, I don't really, I keep saying I want to, like there's always one shoot that's like painful, but then I see the result and I'm like, oh, this is funny. This is, this is fun. Um, and then I go back to it. So I don't, they're all kind of my babies. Um, you know, I, I, I don't think there's any where I'm like, oh, this is just the worst. And, and I, you know, cause I would quit if something was like that shitty. You know, I mean, everybody's got taste, so I, I'm yep. looking at it from just my perspective. So exactly, um, yeah, exactly. Because uh, actually, there's there's someone online who actually reviewed your stuff. Like, there's a guy named um, the Cinema Snob. He's yeah. he's been reviewing some <laughs> of your work, and just like <laughs> it's just like really funny to see his reactions to everything, and just I, but... I watched some of it, and the set. Here's the thing: I I try not to read comments online and i try not to watch reviews of our stuff because um the fact is i know they're gonna get shit on and it's it's you know the fact is if they they have everybody has to act like we don't get our own jokes and we we don't get how it's funny and how it's low budget and how you know right. what everything looks like and we're like we're you know, we're really in tune with what we're doing. Like we, we know what we're doing, you know, it makes us laugh. So we're making it for people like us. Um, so it's hard to watch people like just tear it apart on this for the same reasons we think it's funny, you know? So right. I try to avoid like cinema snob. I, it's people showed me and I watched some of, I think the turtles one yeah, and I'm, I'm like, okay, you know, and, and he does his thing, and that's his joke, and yep. you know that's so. I, I don't, I don't really watch a lot of the stuff. Right. I try to avoid it. it. I think it would, it would probably, even though I shouldn't take it personally, I would probably take it personally. Uh, okay. Um, I've, I've felt it in the beginning, like taking it personally, and I don't know if I've ever gotten over it. So, uh, yeah. So I just, I, I don't okay. really watch that stuff. Okay, that's understandable. I'm missing. Yeah. Okay, that's. Because you know that that there's that side of the world where they're just critiques and critiquing everything, including porn. Yeah, but it's a porno parody. Like, I mean, you know, there's only so much you can do with it. Like, you know, we make it, and I, once again, I I work twenty four seven. I'm on, you know, I give two hundred percent on everything. But the fact is, it's a porn parody, so I only take it so seriously. Uh... Okay. In the end, um, once again, I still take it personally because I still put so much work into it. But you know, I, I know when something's not not good or not. You know, I'm not I'm not an idiot. So right. I'm, I just and I'm not so overwhelmed with pride that I'm I can't you know I can't see a bad wig or a silly costume. You know, like I I but I to me they're part of it. And they're part of the fun, and they're what I grew up on. I'm paying tribute to, you know. Look, I mean, we only have so much budget, anyways. It's I'm sure it's more than a lot of other people, but you know, if if you're trying to mimic a, a hundred and twenty million dollar movie or a giant show, and even if you spent fifty thousand dollars on it, it's not gonna look like it. You know, right. it's gonna look like a bad sketch, and and so. You know, like I, I know that we embrace that. Um, so yeah, I, I, I just, okay. yeah, like I've heard, and a lot of people have watched our stuff based on their reviews. So I'm thankful that they do it. But I don't want to, like, for me, I just try not to get caught up in, in it. I try and go, look, you know, I'm having fun making stuff. Um, you know, if people dig it, they dig it. If they don't, they yep. don't. The fact is, they all watch it, so it's fun, and it's cool, and. Uh, you know, I, I just, I'm having fun. And, um, you know, the, everybody's definitely entitled to be a film stop with it. It's okay. But I, I just, I just try to avoid it. Yeah. I just, this is why I wanted to talk to you because you're just an awesome person who makes great content. And I wanted to tell, oh, thank you. And just promote your site and everything just to, for people to check it out. Cause I just think it's an interesting side of the industry that a lot of people don't know. I appreciate it. I mean, it's 
once again, it's I, it's nothing against them, and they're entitled to. Yep. Once again, the same way I'm entitled to make it my way, you know, and it'll piss some people off, as as I know it does, which is, also makes me laugh a little. Um, you know, if if somebody doesn't say our stuff is ruining their childhood, every movie, I don't. I I think I would stop at that point, anyways, because I wouldn't. I like the reaction. I like a little shock and and anger um, uh, due to our stuff. But because of that, like, I I don't, you know, like, it's hard to watch somebody criticize it for the same reasons. And it's it's weird. It's weird to me also that I would be, you know, I would have uh, some ego about that. But, you know, I guess it's just there and I'm not going to fight it. I'm just going to embrace that that's what it is and not read comments or watch... uh, their stuff, but they are more than entitled, yeah. and I'm happy they're doing it. Um, I just, it's just not my thing. Okie dokie. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know if there was if that answered any question that, or that, I just got you off. But that, that's fine. It's totally fine. Um. So how, how, here's the thing: How do you parody something into like a porn parody? How do you write that as a parody? Like, how do you take the context of the show or movie and turn it into like a porn parody? How's that process uh, work? Um, everyone is different. So it's it's really everything's different. And I've started over the last couple of years with Wood Rocket especially, but I, I think a little earlier. You know, there were things where I would I didn't have enough time, so and there were people that knew the content that we were parodying better. So I'd have them write a draft. Um, or pitch me a draft and we'd come up with a storyline. So for instance, um, let's let's go with Pounder Rangers because it was the last one, I think. It was one of the last ones that I did. And I worked with um, Locke Van Kemp who writes a lot of our our, our superhero stuff and okay. more comic booky stuff, but there's things, you know, that he's really into and he's a great writer. Um and uh, yeah, I, he has all my respect, and he's a funny guy. So um, Locke and I talked about it. I had, you know, I I have to. So I here here's here's how it works basically. Um, if there's something crazy that I want to do, I talk to the special effects guy, Tom Devlin, um, and he he and his team tell me what they can do. And Tom has done a lot of my stuff, but he does a lot of mainstream stuff also. And he was on um face off for a season and oh. he's and he uses his real name he doesn't mind because he's not the one having sex so um but he's he's uh you know super amazing special effects guy but he also knows how to do something on a budget and he does full moon movies and he does just you know some great fun stuff where he does a lot of monster stuff and so i speak to him and i go hey i'm thinking of doing this you know have you seen it you know the characters and like uh for instance um power rangers and turtles you know he did both those things and he did them great oh yeah oh yeah um you know we talk about things and you know molds he has and to say anything to kind of save a couple bucks to make it you know on our budget which is still tens of thousands of dollars but it's you know it's still not, you know, special effects makeup is actually really expensive and uh, usually our most, our biggest expense and, but the thing most worthwhile, you know, for us uh, to kind of do what we're doing. So um, to do four turtle suits costs a lot of money. So we figured, we figured stuff out and how to incorporate the molds into something else and, you know, how to incorporate those into something else. So, we sit and we talk and we figure out, okay, how would we do this? Um, and I know we're talking about Power Rangers, but I pitched him Power Rangers and um, something else that I'm not going to say because we're going to do that coming up and it's okay. really weird. Okay. But I'm like, hey, I have budget to do these two movies. Uh, you know, what What are you thinking like as far as characters you'd like to do? Um, and then we talk about it if he knows it because he'll give me some good ideas about like he loves turtles and he loves uh, Power Rangers, but I pitched him Power Rangers and another thing, and then he told me about something he was working on for himself with turtles, mm-hmm. and I'm like, holy shit! I've been pitched turtles a million times, and I've always figured I'd do it, 
you know, just green body paint girls and not make them look like real turtles. And, you know, I, I had an idea where it would just be all green body paint and it would all be females because I couldn't figure out how to do the turtles as guys and have, uh, this is where it gets weird, I guess, have their dicks work. So <laughs> right. um, we talked about it and then he's like, well, I'm making them out of, you know, uh, out of foam latex and I'm doing all this stuff. And, uh, you know, uh, he told me how he was making them and we talked about the penis, to be honest. <laughs> and, uh, and we talked about that and, um, you know, figured out how to work from there. And the storyline came from that, from what we were able to do. Uh, okay. Um, and then Pounder Ranger is the same thing. We talked about, okay, which bad guys should we do? And we came across a few, and I spoke to Locke after that. Um, and we talked about it and bounced off ideas. And so I'm talking with both anybody I'm writing with, you know, and and the special effects guy and um, Seth Beard, who's the producer at Wood Rocket, um, and one of my oldest friends in the world. He helps me run it. Um, and I talk to my partners and see what they think. And uh, there's a lot of input in the beginning. And then people basically kind of leave me alone to work with the writer and come up with a storyline or Seth's a part of it. And now we have Vuko, who was a model for us, and she helps run Wood Rocket now also. Um, you know, it's collaborative. And then the only thing I kind of do by myself if I'm if I'm not writing it by myself, um, is storyline. The final storyline, I've kind of done enough of these that I know how to do a story arc on a short, in a short period uh, of time, how to tell that story and how to incorporate the sex and where my jokes are gonna go. So I'll I'll work with you know luck for instance, on Pounder Rangers, he pitches me something and I go, oh, you know what would work a little better? Maybe if we do this and this and then, because I also know my budget. So I write it for the budget with him and then he goes off and writes a draft and then I'll write a draft. And then if I do it by myself, which let's say about 50% of them, I write by myself, I just do that myself, but I'll still bounce ideas off of Seth or Vuko, or my wife, or my partners. Um, and, you know, I just come up with it and uh, within our budget. Uh, and then, you know, shoot it. <laughs> we, we cast. We um, try and look for people that look like the part if we need it, or sound like the part if we need it, or we know can play the part if we need it. And then um, we fly them out here and we shoot a movie. And then uh, my wife and I usually do the editing. Um, so I'll do the, the straight ahead editing, you know, the basic stuff. My wife does the effects and um, color correction and titles and any, any of the more pro stuff. She's a professional editor. So um, we do that and then if we need any other special effects, um, animation. Um, uh, my brother is an animator, so he does some of that. Oh. And uh, that's pretty much it. Like, that's that's the whole process, but it changes every time. For instance, Archie, April wrote it. I'd barely made any changes or adjustments to anything, and it was her first script, and it was fantastic. Oh. And it really captured Archie. And... You know, it was what she wanted. Also, at the same time, I have to take that into account. What I, my tastes are, aren't the same as everybody's. Right. So she wanted to do it this way. And, you know, I just went through it, made sure everything went smoothly. And uh, she went in and I was there to help her out. But she really handled the directing and I barely had to do anything. So everything's different. Every time it's, it's different. But, it really, the the only step I think I missed in there is I will watch whatever we're parodying over and over and over. Of course, again. of course. So that's that's the, before I start writing. As I'm, if I'm writing the storyline, if it's me that's doing it, then I will watch it and I'll 
I'll actually run between. I don't even keep the TV in the in the office. I or watch it on a computer in the office. I I run back and forth. It's just the way I work. Um, it kind of gets my brain going as I'm watching it, and I will write notes and write any ideas. And um, as I'm watching it, I'll I'll go oh. You know, like this is how this character sounds. Um, this is the tagline, but I have an idea to to make it a little more word punny. And uh, yeah, I think I think that's the entire process. I've basically told you everything. There we um, go. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's pretty much um, that's that's the thing. And you know, sometimes it takes a week. Sometimes it takes months. Um, it all depends. But uh, yeah, that's how we make a parody. Dare that that's a good uh, way to think about it. And that's I always wondered about that. So, is there anything that you haven't parody yet that you want to parody in the future? Yes, um, I don't know what I can say because I'm going to do them. Okay. Um, but let, let me, uh, like anything. I, I mean, I I could say like. You know, lately we've talked about a few things, and we 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 really want to do. It's always sunny in Philadelphia. Okay. Um, we really we have talked about doing more, um, Doctor Whore. Uh, uh, <laughs> like so, doing doing Christmas specials has been something we've talked about for years. <laughs> so we may end up getting back to that. Um, we're we're looking at comic books now and video games, which we haven't really touched on. Uh, um, so now we're looking at that, um, and we're looking at some mashup stuff. Uh, definitely, uh, you know, really playing around with uh, mixing some some uh, different properties. Uh, uh, yeah, so crossovers. Yeah, yeah. That'd be so, interesting. Yeah, I feel like we're. We're definitely, there's just so much, you know, like I would, one of my favorite movies is, you know, Roadhouse, and I haven't done uh, that yet, but I uh, haven't put it on the list yet. Um, you know, I like, like, there's so many things that I like that I want to do that, you know, I may only stop when, when I'm, when I'm really, you know, old, because uh, it's, uh, it's, I just have a list of things I really want to do still, and it you know it can go on and on oh endless possibilities endless possibilities it's, yeah it's endless yeah. and it's a... and especially now like you know just like because we haven't even gotten into comic books and we haven't gotten into video games and it's you know we've really only scratched the surface i mean let's say maybe over the last eight years there's been let's say maybe a hundred 120 parodies made um it's a lot more than that that hasn't been made right so, you know uh yeah still a lot that i want to do um yeah so definitely trying to figure out where to go next we have a list that we work from um everything you've ever thought of we have on the list basically um we've we've just you know i've i've been planning these for years you know so we've looked at everything from you know nickelodeon to to you know nintendo um and we've we've really like we've just got this giant list so it changes every month okay. um what we want to do and what we're going to do uh but yeah we're we're pretty excited about the stuff coming up and um we're looking at a couple other things and even doing it differently we're going to add some some interesting things starting i think march and april so um you'll have to stay tuned to see what we do that's different but yeah, yeah there's there's some craziness coming Same. you thought it was weird before wait until you see what's coming up yeah right that's good good incentive good tease for the upcoming stuff I, i've thought of i've thought of like ideas for possible porn ideas <laughs> porn parodies like there's one that's been stuck in my head for the longest time i don't know if anybody... wait 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 before you pitch, I have to give you the the uh, the the talk. I, I call okay. it the talk because okay. Okay. I get pitched a lot. Yeah, just, just know that. And I actually don't ever take pitches because um, I've I've thought of ever look anything that's ever been a TV show, a movie, uh, you know, a video game, a comic book. We've 
We've discussed it. A play, anything. We've discussed it. Um, hell, a song. We've we've taken musicians and stuff and, and considered it. Mm-hmm. Um, and we ne- we don't take any pitches usually because I don't want somebody thinking because if they pitch it and we do it that it wasn't on the list, I don't want to get sued, basically. But oh. So I'm going to give you the talk, which okay. I give everybody, which okay. is I am happy to hear your pitches. Just know that we probably thought of uh, of it already, so you can't be surprised if right. I'm not shocked. And um, and if we do it, you know, it's not necessarily based on your pitch. Cause right. We've uh, so I'm just letting you know before. Yep. No. Okay. No. No. <laughs> I'm, no. That's fine. Like I'm lawyers' all... orders. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, all all I was gonna say is a, a parody of Ducktales, Fucktales. Yes. And we've it's funny because we have talked about that in the last. I think even back in the last two weeks, um, I met somebody who worked on the show, and I was like, on the new show, the new one. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's what I was thinking, because it's coming up pretty soon in the summer. I was like, that would be good timing. Yeah. We have talked about it, and I've tried to figure out just the bills. You know, like, I've, I've tried... Feathers are one thing. Um, you can spray paint somebody white. But uh, the, the bills are just... You know, there's no oral sex scenes. There's no... Because they're ducks. Right. Um, so I, I, I've tried to figure it out, and it has been one that has plagued me. Um, you know, once in a while, there's one which is a real a real fucking challenge. Um, and, uh, and literally. And, and this, this is one of them that has sat there, and we've talked about it, and we've never been sure... Because... Um, you know you need to do the diving into the the money pit the gold coin yeah you know how do you do that on a budget even <laughs> like you know green screen or no green screen it's 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 a big one i so, know i know but i just i just thought it would be just perfect with the title and just like how it's oh yeah yeah no i'm with you on it so um yes we have uh okay we have considered it we're just uh, okay it's such a tough one i like, know but if you do it right it'd be perfect yeah, there's like ones like that where I'm like, oh, the the amount of prosthetics, and then you know, the, we shoot in a studio and like so doing the mansion and the, you know like how do you the vault alone is like crazy, but I know uh, everything else, you know, and then do we have to do a tailspin sequel? Oh, sh- you know, spin off, you know, uh, little oh, the tail, Disney- I guess it's tailspin oh. still. All but, the Disney afternoon shows. God yeah, damn it. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. all I'm saying is, I'm with you. I'm with you, and and we are considering it, um, but I'm yeah, just figuring I, it I, out. I can understand that. Yeah, painful. Yeah, I can, painful. I can understand it. It's <laughs> yeah. Um, the amount of work that goes into a lot of this stuff, it's it's just draining, like turtles. It took a lot, you know. Oh, yeah, I know. I can see really that. Really suffering in those costumes, so I bet it's um, making people into ducks. <laughs> is is uh, yeah, it's it's maybe, and maybe that's how I have to do it is rubber, kind of the same rubber costumes rather than just painting people white and putting feathers on them and a bill. On True, them. it could be you anything. Um, but. But I appreciate the pitch. I'm just, yeah. I have to give you the speech. That, that was fine, because I didn't care if you, you were working <laughs> on it or not. I was just, because I, I tweeted it. I, I probably in the past tweeted about it in the past and just, like, said it, and people are just like, ah, that's probably a good idea. Um, yeah. I will, here, here's the deal. I'll invite you to set, if, and I don't invite anybody to set. Uh-oh. If we do it, you are invited out to set. Oh, shit. That. That'd be awesome. Yeah. So if so you ever, if you ever worked at work, yeah, if you work that out, give me a contact. We'll I will let because that way you'll know what what we we figure out finally. So. Oh fuck yeah! Okay, I'll, I'll 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 make that word for you. We'll make that a deal. All right. Cool. Um. Yeah. No. I. But I. We have been thinking about it, and it may happen. It might not. I don't know. We'll. We're we're really. We're, we've been playing with it a long yeah. time. So. So are you guys like? in los angeles or i think you guys established you're in las vegas now yeah we've we've been in vegas for about uh whew, probably about three years maybe more um we were in los angeles before we do work back and forth like 
we're we travel a lot you know and um and we're in canada a lot and uh, we're kind of all over the place but yeah home base is out here now and uh yeah it's pretty good how how is the difference when sh- doing porn in different areas like i know that california had that like rule about like condoms on set or something or ordinance and they to... still kind of do like los angeles does and um i i honestly the and we didn't leave because of that even though we left around the same time right uh, we left because it's super expensive to shoot in los angeles and it's really frustrating because the fact is you have to get a lot of permits the permits are expensive the regulations are expensive basically following everything uh, and that's not safety regulations. This is just permits, which is crazy, and and filming regulations, um, not not even the safety regulations. So it's expensive, and it was they were talking about it getting more expensive. And you have you have to expect that you're going to get on a shoot. And remember, if you're shooting a scene or you're shooting. Um, something in a day and it has to get done you only have eight hours to shoot it and it's basically you know a 10 hour day in an eight hour period um but you're getting stopped because the fire marshal has to come by and check it and Uh. even though it's not your studio you know it's not your not your place it's not you know you're abiding by the fire marshal's rules anyways you sign the permits and then um the police come and check if you have your permit and it's it's just you stop and start and stop and start and it's really expensive and then everybody's late because LA well known for its traffic there's always traffic and everybody's always late so um for us it it just made sense to move to a place nearby pretty cheap to fly people in and out of not a lot of traffic really cheap like a lot more relaxed on the rules with permitting. Like you still have to have a permit, but right. they're a lot cheaper. You don't have to pay for one every single day you shoot, um, which you do in LA. Um, it's it's you know just just a lot better. Um, it's I like it. It's it's a lot more. I'm a lot more relaxed than I was shooting in LA. I'm 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 an anxious person, and. Uh, LA doesn't help that. Um, right. Las Vegas, I'm I'm super relaxed. I really like shooting here. I like living here, and um, I don't, you know, it, I I like being away from the other companies. I mean, there's some up out here, but the fact is, in LA, you bump into everybody everywhere. True. That you know your competition, and and the fact is, I don't like being immersed in that. I I like. I'm a homebody. I like hanging out with my wife and my friends and my cats, and uh, and I like doing art and I like writing and I don't want to go to clubs and I don't want to, you know. So for me, it's I get to avoid uh, porn parties and porn dinners and and I know some people are like, oh man, but no, I mean it's not me and it's not yeah. us and you know we really enjoy being out here. So that's another part of it. It's mm-hmm. Cool. It's nice to be away from from the action and then you know when you go to work you go to work. Cool. Cool. Yeah. That's cool. So, do you have any advice? I don't know if I can say any advice for anybody who wants to be in the porn industry, but any any advice yeah. tr- trying to get into like the the industry of video production in general, how do they any advice well, in general? Um now is like here, here here's what I would say. And, and I tried for years, I mean, and once again, I didn't settle for porn, I chose to be in porn. You know, I right. went from TV to this, and I wasn't fired, and I wasn't, you know, I I just, I wanted the freedom of doing this. So for me, it's about independence. Um, I would rather do an independent thing than anything big, and um, because it's less stress, you know, so... I would say, though, now, as shitty as it is for filmmakers, it's great for other filmmakers. So um, you're not going to get rich doing it, but you may be able to pay your bills. And, um, you know, 
because of the amount of platforms and how easy it is to get in on them and how and the access to shooting a movie now like anybody can shoot a movie with their friends mm-hmm. um i'm not talking about porno that right i Just think you might lose some friends if you really push them <laughs> but but like in general if you're sh- yep. if you want to shoot a comedy or a short film or a sketch um you do it and you put it on youtube or you put it on um itunes or you put it on uh vimeo and you can charge money for it and once again you may not get rich but you'll learn everything you can you know you'll learn how to promote you'll learn how to push it you'll learn how to sell it you'll learn everything every aspect of filmmaking um which is probably the most important thing you know if you're a director um or a producer you should know some of everything not a lot of one thing and um if you do things independently you learn everything. So if you're okay and can pay your bills and aren't homeless by trying to do it, it's worth the risk to try and just make something on your own. Um, I I know that, you know, I've been offered a few things in mainstream and they're not really, they haven't really been for me, but it's, it's been harder, um, like as you, to get things made, you know, it's, if things take longer, they want more done in Hollywood now, you know, they want, they want things that are completed, basically, because uh, they're losing money on piracy and things of the sort. Mm-hmm. So it's it's harder to become, you know, what was once thought of as a professional filmmaker, whereas in that way. Um, but to be an independent, you know, filmmaker or an independent sketch comedy writer or just do it. You do it, you put it online, you get your audience. It's Once again, we didn't start with a ton of people going to Wood Rocket or, you know, in the last year, we got 100,000 subscribers to our YouTube channel. You know, we, we did that by making things that interested people. And and that's not even with our porn. That's just, yeah. you know, yeah. it's a lot of just interviews and things like that. So I, I'd say just do what, what you would watch and what you think other people would watch and just do it, you know, and anybody, you can shoot a movie on your phone now, if you, or a sketch on your phone now, if you have, to. you know, it's, it's really cheap. And if you have yourself, you can shoot something with yourself. So, you know, that is some very common sense advice, but that's always good to spread that around because some people don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Some people don't know. I, and some people wait. And I I know people that are, like, they need to get into Hollywood. That's their thing. It's different now, though. Like, I don't think, I don't think you need Hollywood. I think you need to establish yourself first. And if you can build a fan base yourself, um, you know, you go on the Reddit filmmaker uh, uh, subreddit and, you know, you get, you go and you do and just spread the word on YouTube, on on social media, you don't need a big company. Big companies will come to you later. You know, start yeah. off by doing good stuff on no budget, and and you'll find an audience if it's good. Yep, exactly. Any uh, final words you want to say before we wrap these up? Uh, just uh, I hope people check out WoodRocket.com and the WoodRocket YouTube page, and if they want to follow us, we're on. Instagram at Wood Rocket and Twitter at Wood underscore Rocket. Um, I think that's everything. We probably have a Snapchat and other stuff too, but you know, they can find it. Yeah, I'll probably just link all that below in the description so that it's easy to click, click, click and follow, follow, follow. And uh, so yeah, just check them out. Check, check Wood Rocket out. Check everything out. These guys are great. They're doing what they love, and uh, it's it's a porn parody. Just enjoy it. Be uplifting. Don't just be like, what the fuck are they doing with their lives? Oh, they can, though. I'm just not going to read it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I, I won't send those comments to you then. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. So uh, thank you for listening to this interview. Thank you, Lee, for coming on and chatting with me. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So until then, uh, thanks for listening, and uh, goodbye.